Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, put that header, that nice new header there, on that case wind drawer. But there's a few things that I have to do to it before I actually go ahead and slam that thing on that machine. Uh, first things first, there's some welds that I found that were pretty crappy. And I'll show you those when I get into the shop with it. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and throw you up here on the uh, little bipod, tripod thingy I got. And we'll take you along. Okay. Let's get this thing off of there. Okay, so as promised, I wanted to show you what I got going on here. Now, at the back of this thing, because this auger was cut, you see how they cut that and ground that? This was cut and ground so that the grass that they were cutting, it, would, it was more gentle at the center, so it wasn't bunching. Um, but apparently, they, they had this auger go all the way around and this one here went around to the center and it didn't work out for them whether it was a wrapping issue or whatnot maybe it wasn't throwing it far enough they had to add these flippers to it which you know flippers are great I have no problem with them but whoever did the welding really did not do the greatest job and they did use a MIG but it just looked like they got real sloppy with it so what I'm gonna try and do oh I can't even do that but anyways, I don't like bird shit welds on my stuff. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and run uh, with the uh, arc welder a couple of beads down through here and see where we see how that works out. It may or may not be it may not be worth it at all. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can see how they cut it. They just kind of hacked it off. But anyway, yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing there. And the other thing was they had stolen. Uh, let me flip this thing down. They had stolen the ends off of here, and they never tightened them up. So I got to tighten them. Go ahead and tighten those ends up. I've got them connected into one another, as you can see. I just boop, connected them in. And these here ends, they never. There's two of them, each side, one on each side. Geez, I wonder who's coming in here. Nobody's coming in. Anyways, they never connected them on the inside, so. Or they took the they took the couplers off. I'm trying to do two things at once, and I think they're just regular Pioneer couplers. I got to go down to the case machine and see what it is. But at least they put cap plugs on for that, so that it didn't gum it up. But there's two of them. The other one is over here, and it is actually attached. I'm pretty sure they're just Pioneer plugs. You know, they look like it. Uh, but they're the John Deere style, I believe, because they're O-ring style. Or yeah, they're O-ring style, not John Deere style. And I'll have to put a pair of those on for this. Uh, it does run, this is a different pump, or yeah, pump, a different motor than what is on the case, but it won't matter. Uh, I know for a fact that these are the Eaton, Eaton ones. Um, yeah, the ones that I have on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the case header are Sour Danfoss. And to be quite honest with you, I like the Sour Danfoss pumps or motors. They seem to work. I don't have any troubles with them. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Eatons because that's what was on the No Rower 240. Uh, it just didn't have the power it would stall out. But that, I believe, was in the hydrostatic side of it, the, the drive side of it, not the driven side of it. So anyway, uh, yeah, you're probably wondering what all this mess is. Yeah, because I do too. Um, but while I was away, I commissioned the boys, uh, Tim and Cody, to pull all those parts out of that parts bin there. Because there's just a lot of shit in there that I'm not going to use. It's useless to me. It needs to be cleaned out and, uh, you know, throw away the garbage and, and re, you know, re, refill the thing with the right stuff. So that's what I'm, you know, with the good stuff, stuff that I can use. And that's what all this crap is, is stuff that... I don't think I need any more. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And uh, that's that's what's going on there. So when Timothy gets back, I'm going to just have him start putting stuff back in there because we straightened it up. It was leaning. So we're going to put this all back in that in the cubby holes 
and the junk goes on the junk heap, and the good stuff goes back in the cubby holes. So, here we go. Let me get my welder. Okay, now I'm at the case wind drawer, WD-2303, and there's been a lot of questions as to why am I, why did I buy that header for this machine? Well, I'll give you a whole bunch of reasons why I bought this header. I think I did already, but I can, I can do it again. Uh, I have no need for the crusher rolls or the conditioning rolls on this machine. Just, it's not necessary. Uh, the, the rolls need to be, rollers need to be replaced, which I can do. No big deal. I can do that. Uh, the header is, and this, this conditioning roll system will fit on that mower, on the new header. It'll, it'll mount right up. It's no big deal to do that. Uh, I just don't feel the need to do that, and I'm going to save a lot of money in fuel. These trackers, uh, the timing is actually retarded on the injection, so it's it's injecting before top dead center. So it takes that so that it burns cleaner. Don't ask me why they want to do that, but it takes more fuel to run an engine, a diesel engine that way. But uh, so uh, I'm all about trying to make these things as fuel efficient as possible, and running this unit unnecessarily is just, you know, it's, it's unnecessary. And it's burning a lot of fuel that I don't need to burn. I'm trying to cheapen up my operation, make it more efficient. Uh, the, the header has all kinds of problems with it. You know, it's just got stress fractures in it, broken this, broken that, because, well, let's face it, I've been using it now for since 2008. And, uh, you know, to throw away the tractor part of it is, is kind of silly over a header issue. Uh, it would be well worth it to buy a brand new header uh, that is like this for this machine, but you can't get the RD-162 anymore. You have to buy the, the, well, I'm not even sure what it is, but in the New Holland model, it is the 416. And as you know, I did have that on the, I did have that on the, uh, on the no rower 240 which I just it was a piece of shit I'm sorry I, I just can't say anything good about that machine uh what else can I say uh yeah uh so yeah what I'm down here for and why I'm here is pretty simple I just needed to come down and see if this is a pioneer fitting on this particular piece now I've had to replace this hose um we blew it up this is a Parker hose tough hose and I'm pretty sure it's just a yep it's just a pioneer fitting on the end there so I'm not going to take it off of here I'm going to leave them on and I'm I think I have some o-ring style park uh o-ring style pioneer fittings that I can go ahead and put on the uh, on that header before I get started taking this one off uh I have never taken this header well, I have yeah I did take this header off a couple times just a couple times uh, it's really no big deal. Uh, the the feet are missing, so I have to actually just block them up with wooden blocks and stuff, and then I will do that. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get the Pioneer fittings on the other header, and then I'm going to go ahead and drop this off, and then I'm going to pick that one up, and I'm going to test it out. I'm just going to see how it works. I got some. I mean, I can make a pass here just to see how it cuts and how it spits out the hay out the back when I'm done. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? Um, yeah, why do I have this one? Why did I keep this one? Well, this is Old Faithful. I mean, this this mower has been great. Uh, never had any problems really with the uh, with the tractor part of it. It's always been reliable. Um, the reason I bought the No Rower, rower 240 was to upgrade. It had nothing to do with the problems, you know, problems with the tractor part of it. So all I did was put new tires all the way around it, and uh, I bought that other head, so we're good to go as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah, I needed to have two wind rowers to keep up in front of the old New Holland baler, and uh, now with this Crone baler, I just got a pretty good feeling that I'm not going to be able to keep up to two wind rowers. I may even get that Gale uh, Hydra Swing over there fixed and ready to rock and roll. It needs a new cutter bar, which is five or six thousand dollars. And I really don't feel like spending that kind of money right now on the cutter bar, but I'm gonna possibly do that. Then me, Dad, and Timothy can go to the field and mow. Uh, or something. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, 
or me, Dad, and Cody. It doesn't matter. Or me, Tim, and Cody. It, it really doesn't matter who's running the machines as long as they're running. Uh, the hay crop behind me looks like killer. It's great. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's why I bought the new head because there's nothing wrong with this tractor. Uh, the seat needs a little attention, which is no big deal. I get those parts pretty quick and easy, and uh, you know we should be we should be good to go coming into this year. The John Deere wind rower is in the building over there, and it is uh, just had some upgrades done to it. John Deere came out and did some upgrades to it. I have not ridden it, driven it, or anything since they did the upgrades. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even here when they did the upgrades. I was where the hell was I? I think I was going to get copper sulfate. I'm not sure. But anyway, so that's, that's where I was. Uh, so that, that got done. And uh, yeah, so I might as well just shut up now and, and go do the work on that other mower or the other header so I can get this one off and that one on so we can test her out. Yeah. Shut up, one lonely farmer. Shut up.